Welcome to Greybeard's Jewels. Today we bring you the story of the Indus Valley Civilization. In 1827, British soldier James Lewis was serving in the artillery of the East India Company Army in Agra. Weather turned sour by the slaughter of over 4,000 Indians at the siege of Burrapur, or simply bored with army life, Lewis deserted along with a friend. The two men melted into the countryside and began traveling through India. To avoid detection in the heavily controlled British state, Lewis changed his name to Charles Masson. Masson was discovered by the legendary Prince of Gore, Josiah Harlan, and was commissioned as a mounted orderly in his expedition to overthrow the regime in Kabul, Afghanistan. Still not one for a life of taking orders, Masson deserted Harlan soon after and began to search for, of all things, coins. Masson was an avid collector interested in pursuing a few leads on ancient coins that took him to over 50 sites across Pakistan. Masson amassed a startling 47,000 coins and 9,000 ancient artifacts from his travels, most of which are in the care of the British Museum today. But his most surprising discovery was Harappa. Had he known he had just stumbled across an ancient city that would rewrite what we know about the oldest civilizations, he would likely not have been so hasty to depart. Masson merely made a quick note of the site in his diary and guessed its origins, attributing it to Alexander the Great during his campaigns in India in 326 BCE. Thankfully, British and Indian authorities took an interest in Masson's brief mention of the site in his book, Narrative of Various Journeys in Balakistan, Afghanistan, and Punjab, written after returning to Britain. Excavations at Harappa began slowly, and by 1925 the site was well underway. Rumors of another place referred to as Mohenjo-Daro, or the Mound of the Dead by locals, prompted more excavations. The similarities between the two cities, though miles apart, were easily recognizable. The Indus Valley civilization had been discovered. Stretching for over a million square kilometers in what is now Pakistan, Afghanistan, and northern India, the Indus Valley civilization is believed to have flourished around the same time as Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt, and possibly even before. Compared to those other two ancient civilizations, our knowledge of the Indus Valley is far newer and less precise. Archaeologists generally agree that civilization was born around 7000 BCE and lasted until at least 600 BCE. But historians seem to be less sure, some claiming the peoples there weren't around until closer to 2500 BCE. Just like the vast debate around chronology, much of the Indus Valley civilization remains shrouded in mystery. The total population of the Indus Valley may have been upward of 5 million. This is a shockingly large number since, by comparison, the population of Egypt when the pyramids was built was likely around 2 million. The cities of the Indus Valley were large, too, with Harappa and the newly renamed Mohenjo-Daro, now meaning Mound of Happy Voyagers, each housing about 10,000 people. Just a quick reminder to like, subscribe, and turn on all notifications so you won't miss a thing. And now, back to the show. Among the three ancient civilizations of Mesopotamia, Egypt, and Indus, the Indus was the most extensive. Many scholars therefore think that it is likely the inventions and discoveries we attribute to Egypt and Mesopotamia originated in the Indus Valley. Why don't we know for sure? We have yet to decipher the language of the Indus. While early writing is associated with the Sumerians, the ancient Egyptians, and the ancient Chinese, all of whom shared communication along the waterways their cities rested on, the Indus script has unique elements, suggesting it may have been developed indigenously. The writing is comprised of pictographic signs and human and animal motifs, including the unicorn. Most samples of Indus script that have been unearthed are short, only five marks on average, with the longest having just 27. 
Over a hundred scholarly attempts at the decipherment have been published, and experts agree on very little. We do know that the Indus script was written from right to left, like Hebrew and Arabic, and the combination of symbols leads scholars to believe the writing was governed by grammar, with the same rules remaining consistent throughout the entire lifespan of the civilization. But until some equivalent of the Rosetta Stone is found for Indus script, there is little hope we will discover the meaning behind this baffling text. We know much about Mesopotamian religion. It was polytheistic. Followers worshipped three main gods, Yi, Anu, and Enlil, and thousands of minor gods. Likewise, we know a great deal about the beliefs of ancient Egyptians, their rituals tied to preparing for the afterlife, their faith in pharaohs acting as intermediaries between themselves and the gods, and the value they placed on myths. But the Indus left little behind to direct us to their religious beliefs. A few Indus seals show swastika symbols used in Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism. There is also some evidence of a mother goddess symbolizing fertility and a male god wearing a headdress of horns. But there is no evidence of any temples or places of worship. Our only evidence of beliefs is from the undeciphered script and small collection of statues and figurines recovered from excavation sites. The lack of evidence of a shared system of beliefs has caused some historians to refer to Mohenjo-Daro as the godless city. Both Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro also lack any evidence of palaces, monumental structures, or other signs of any kind of ruler. The differences in house types and size point to some degree of social stratification, but not to monarchy. Historians suggest Mohenjo-Daro could have been akin to a city-state with a proto-democratic rule, whatever its politics. The city was an engineering and architectural marvel. It boasted a well-planned rectilinear street grid and was built of standardized sized baked bricks. Each home featured its own baths and toilets, and a large communal great bath leads scholars to believe that the Indus people valued cleanliness to a high degree. The great bath was an architectural curiosity, an in-ground, waterproof pool that was undoubtedly the earliest public water tank in the ancient world. What the bath was used for is a mystery, but many believe it could have been host to purification rituals. The city also featured communal trash disposal at the street corners and had no less than 700 wells for fresh water, along with a sophisticated drainage system that rivaled that of early Rome. Devices known as wind catchers were attached to the roofs of some buildings, providing an early form of air conditioning. Harappa featured similar amenities, along with evidence of apartment-like dwellings likely used as workers' quarters. What's so astonishing about these cities isn't just the sophisticated technology they displayed, it's the clear evidence of pre-planning. Unlike other earlier civilizations, the cities of Indus did not grow from small, rural communities that gradually increased in size and population. They had been thought out, built on a chosen site, and constructed prior to habitation. The urban planning of the Indus Valley is better than that of its modern counterparts in the nearby regions. The cities also hold evidence of high levels of standardization. There were regular systems of weights and measures, shared granaries, and well-regulated trade. Some pottery appears to be mass-produced, found throughout the valley, and marked with signs of a central distributor. It's also believed the Indus were the first civilization to develop inventions like the button, the circular saw, flush toilets, dams, step wells, rulers, shampoo, dentistry, and stoneware. The advancements present in the archaeological sites of the Indus Valley are eerily modern. In agriculture, the Indus had a clear understanding of irrigation techniques, used various farming implements, and established cattle and crops. They developed wheels to pull carts drawn by cattle, and built flat-bottom boats wide enough to carry trade goods. Beyond that, experts can only guess at the tools and techniques used by Indus farmers. It is widely accepted that they were highly productive since they could support tens of thousands of urban residents. It's unknown if the advancements in crop cultivation and animal husbandry 
developed independently in the Indus Valley, or were learned from elsewhere. The discovery of Indus seals in places as far away as the Arabian Gulf, Ur and Mesopotamia, and Lothal, India, lead us to believe the Indus were prolific traders. One of the mysteries of the Indus Valley is their extensive use of seals. These small, soapstone artifacts are just over an inch and feature inscriptions and often single, large animals, including unicorns. The back of many of the thousands of seals discovered have a single centered round projection with a bored hole, indicating the seal could be strung. Like so many aspects of the Indus culture, the use of seals is not agreed upon by scholars. Some experts believe they were used in trade. Citing traces of rope as evidence, they branded, fastened bundles of merchandise. Others posit they were worn as personal amulets, used as identification. Some scholars even think the seals could have been a sort of a passport system, with different cities or regions bearing their own symbols. Travelers could then collect a seal from locations they visited. Perhaps the most unsettling mystery of the Indus Valley civilization is how it ended. Experts have collected enough evidence to know it didn't happen all at once. Shockingly, the larger cities were the first to be abandoned. There appears to have been a breakdown of social and political control, and much of the progressive traits, such as the use of writing, the mysterious seals, and the specialized crafts, disappeared. By 1500 BCE, the cities were deserted. Rural life in the Indus Valley persisted until 600 BCE with the population moving steadily southward. But with the lack of artifacts from this period, historians know little about it. What was it that forced the Indus to flee their sophisticated sprawling cities in exchange for a more primitive way of life? Like with everything else surrounding the Indus Valley, there are many theories and few agreements. Some experts claim climate change as a likely factor. Perhaps the course of rivers the Indus relied on changed or the seasons were no longer conducive to their way of farming. Some even point to evidence of water to show there was vast flooding. Others say the arrival of rice from East Asia spurred a gradual process of deurbanization. There is also evidence of overcrowding in the cities. The great bath of Mohenjo-Daro was built over with houses, and newer homes were built quickly and cheaply. There is speculation that the Mohenjo-Daro was attacked toward the middle of the second millennium BCE by raiders who swept through the city, killing everyone in their path, then continued. The discovery of 39 human skeletons at the site and mentions of a large war called Rig Veda in Hindu poems served as evidence for this theory, but it has been widely denounced. From all that has been unearthed about the Indus, it appears it was a peaceful society and there is no other evidence of weapons or battles. It is also possible that in this valley fell when Mesopotamia's trade network collapsed, cutting off the access to the Indus leading trade partner. However, the most widely supported theory of the decline of the Indus Valley contains a bit of each of these. The cities likely began to decline due to overpopulation and changes in the waterways, which led to the spread of disease and a myriad of other hardships that eventually forced people to abandon their urban lives. And though the Indus Valley continued to be home to millions of people for hundreds of years, they never returned to greatness. As to what became of those late Indus Valley dwellers, evidence suggests they ventured to other parts of the world and changed the trajectory of different civilizations. Recent research on the genome of Aboriginal Australians indicates that there was substantial gene flow from India during the time the cities of the Indus Valley collapsed. This is also consistent with sudden change in plant processing and tool technologies, along with the first evidence of the infamous Australian dog, the dingo. Is it possible the Indus fleeing cities like Harappa made their way to Australia and passed along their knowledge, and even a dog or two? DNA collected from a woman in a 4,500-year-old burial site in the Indus Valley revealed that the people of the Indus Valley civilization are the primary ancestors of most living Indians in much of South Asia. Most of the truth about the Indus Valley civilization is locked away in its indecipherable script or still lying buried in the ruins of their ancient cities. The excavation sites themselves are under threat due to near-constant stream of terrorists, along with soil salination, 
and rising water levels. While the researchers will uncover what remains before it's impossible to excavate further, or if they will devise a non-destructive way to study these sites remains to be seen. The ancient Egyptians left us pyramids and hieroglyphs. The Mesopotamians left us the first record of war and what we believe is the earliest form of written language. The Indus Valley civilization has left us with mysteries, which once unlocked may teach us more about the earliest humans than we ever thought possible. We hope you enjoyed today's show. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Greybeard's Jewels. And don't forget the podcast. Bye.